Hi hi and good evening. I'm Alice and today I'm going to show you what does the AI defensive block actually do? How can you increase the base range of your turrets? And how can you make your drones flee from danger? So let's get right into it. Now with the AI defensive block we can see that it comes in both a small grid and large grid format and it works the same on both. So if we have a look inside its control panel, we can see a variety of options. Like usual, we have the AI behavior on and off, and then we have some new interesting options. First of all, we have defend against enemies, where we can toggle between enemies and neutrals. If we can select what subsystem we want to defend against. If we want it to lock to targets that meet the above criteria. If we want it to target characters, and then we get to the more interesting sections. We have something called Flea Trigger. Now in Flea Trigger, we can set it to always flee, whenever it is taking damage, or when the target is locked. Underneath, we can see that we also have Flea 2, where we can either set a beacon or a GPS point. Now, as well, you need to set the flea waypoint size, which as it says right there, the distance to the selected waypoint, the grid should be to consider it to have been reached. So if it is within 250 meters of a selected beacon or GPS signal, it will consider its target reached and it will stop fleeing. So I've decided to set up one of the defensive blocks onto my cargo drone. So if we go into its control panel, we can start configuring some of its settings. So let's first of all turn AI behavior on, and let's set the flea trigger to when taking damage. Then we will set the flea, flea to, to the GPS flea point, and adjust down the flea waypoint size to zero, meaning it has to get right up and onto the GPS point. Then, once that is set up, let's go ahead and turn on the AI flight behavior and turn off precision mode. And let's go ahead and turn up the speed as well. So once that is set up, we can go over to our enemy drone. Deep boop, I am an enemy. Then, if we go into our offensive block and then turn on AI behavior, let's see what happens. So as we can see, the moment it opens fire and starts doing damage, our cargo drone begins to flee. And it flies right up to the flea point. And once it has reached it, it considers job done. So when setting up our defensive block, we have to remember that we did have two flea options, or technically three but we have two important ones, when taking damage and when target locked. So let's go ahead and change it to when target locked. Now, what will happen then is that the moment it gets locked on by the AI offensive block of the enemy drone, it should begin to flee. So if we go ahead and turn the AI behavior on the offensive block, on again, we can see that it locks onto the drone, and the moment it does so, our drone already begins to flee. Now, there are a few more things that we need to go over when it comes to the AI defensive block. So if we go back into the control panel for our AI defensive block, we will be able to see that we also have the with subsystem category. Now, let us just have an example. So if we change the subsystem type to weapons, change it to always flee, and go to the flee point, then turning on AI behavior on both our defensive block and our flight block, although there is an enemy right next to us, because it doesn't have any weapons, our drone does not flee. But if we were to change the subsystem type to propulsion, 
once it has done searching, it should be able to detect, oh no, there's an enemy close by with propulsion. And so then it begins to flee. So by changing the subsystem category, you're able to more precisely configure when exactly you want the drone to be able to flee. In the beginning of the video, I also mentioned how the AI defensive block is able to increase turret ranges. Well, how you do that is quite simple. So if we just find our AI defensive block, set the subsystem to let's say propulsion, and turn on its AI behavior, although the assault cannon turret's AI aiming radius is set to 200 meters, the moment we turn on the AI behavior for our defensive block, our assault turret turns to face the enemy that is outside of its aim radius before it begins to open fire. So let's test this a little further. Now, the assault cannon turret has a maximum range of 1,400 meters. So whilst it annihilates our little cargo drone, let's go ahead and go up to a kilometer. As we can see, there is an enemy grid 994 meters away, which is well outside of the assault cannon turret's 800 AI aiming radius. So, if we go into our AI defensive block, and turn on the AI behavior, we can see that the assault cannon turret once again turns to face the enemy before opening fire. Now, as you can see, the AI assault cannon turret has stopped firing. Why has it done that? Well, the reason is that its targeting option is set to weapons and there currently aren't any more weapons around. So although the subsystem option on the AI defensive block is set to propulsion, the actual targeting option of the weapon completely overrides that. But the moment we turn it to default, the AI defensive block inserts its subsystem targeting and the turret begins to open fire again. So if you want to have a singular AI defensive block that has pretty much complete control over all your turrets, you can leave their targeting option on default and have the AI defensive block select what subsystem they target. So you can leave your turrets targeting options on default whilst having your AI defensive block be the one that assigns what subsystem all your turrets attack. If not, then you can still set your targeting options in your turrets individually without the AI defensive blocks subsystem impacting it. And with that, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to push that like button if this was helpful in any way, shape or form. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more guides like this one. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye!